September the 3rd, 2015. Murmansk, Arctic, Russia. Guo Chuan, China's most famous sailor and his five-man elite crew of international mariners are about to set sail to attempt a daunting challenge. A record-breaking, never-been-done-before journey across the Arctic Ocean's Northeast Passage from Murmansk to the Bering Straits. The crew make last-minute preparations for the formidable test ahead. We don't actually have a fridge. We have the hold, which is at water level. Since the water temperature never exceeds five or six degrees, we have a natural fridge, so that's fine. We have two robes to hold the mast. A big rope to hold the top of the mast, and this is a, a small one to hold the middle of the mast, the lower shroud. And this, we just make it a little bit more tight. An easy job. There's a warm send-off for Guo and the team as their trimaran, Qingdao China, sets off on her voyage. I'm very excited. We are near the starting line, just three minutes away. Less than three minutes. Wind speed, 12 knots, from the southwest. Not too strong. From here, we can see the remote lighthouse. You may not see it on the screen. It's one of the marks for the starting line. Five, four, three, two, one. Crossing the line. After two years of preparation, the start line is crossed. We made it. Finally. For Qingdao, China, the beginning of the challenge is a cause for celebration. Within hours of their departure, French crew member Quentin Montagier received some good news about his pregnant wife. Has he arrived? Has he arrived? He's become a father for the first time. A little boy. He's called Lucien. He's fine, and the mother is too. After three days in good wind, the team make excellent progress. The crew on Qingdao, China, are operating on two-man watches. German national Tim Frank stays behind the camera, and Russian polar expert Sergei Nizovtsev keeps a wary eye on their passage through sensitive Russian waters. Guo shares his two-man post with Frenchman Quentin Monégier. And there's a rare treat, chocolate for breakfast. <music> Fellow Frenchman Jochen Kraut, who has a German background, shares with Boris Herrmann, who is German but speaks good French. So the multinational, multilingual crew is working in perfect harmony. Meanwhile, for Quentin, there's a first glimpse of his two-day-old son. It will be perfect. I go. Day six. Guo and his team have passed the halfway point and gone higher than any other racing boat, more than 78 degrees north. But for the first time, Qingdao China meets the most hazardous threat to her journey, ice. I win. Yet the first sight of ice is cause for celebration for Quentin. I made a bet with Jochen and Sergei that we wouldn't see an iceberg for at least two days. I said we would, and they said no, so we bet two bottles of vodka. And we've just passed an iceberg. So I've won two bottles of vodka. And I can even put them on the iceberg to chill if I want to. Iceberg. 
even though her three hulls have been reinforced with Kevlar and she's been fitted with ice-detecting sonar, ice flows can send even the strongest boat to the bottom. Qingdao China gets too close for comfort. Guo and his crew scramble to avoid a collision. Fortunately, our reaction was right. We took in the foresail first, turned the boat a little bit, before slowly turning it from a starboard tack to a port tack. Then we unfurled the foresail again and finally drifted away from the iceberg and escaped from a difficult situation. We were, at the closest, only about 20 metres from it. Fortunately, we are more scared than hurt. It's lucky we reacted fast. All's well that ends well, but I feel very emotional. Day seven, and there's a rare treat from the galley for a team which has been living on dehydrated food. French veteran Jochen Kraut puts his culinary skills to good use, bacon and scrambled eggs on bread. Delicious. You see, we have bacon and eggs now. A nice meal. Just like home. Jochen is the cook for us all today. There's little rest for Guo and the crew, even late into the night, when the work is even more demanding than during daylight. There is at least one respite, Arctic wildlife one of the precious wonders of the world's oceans. We just saw some seals. You can see them in the ocean. The night was dark, but they were quite curious and swimming around our boat. We're staying here for a while as there's no wind. But at least we have the seals for company, as there's really not much to do. It's really quite a tedious time for us. Day nine, and Guo and his crew can see the Arctic ice cap, an amazing sight few sailors have ever cast eyes on. Soon, these waters will turn into solid ice and bring long months of howling snowstorms and perpetual darkness. Qingdao, China, a marvel of modern racing design, is covered in ice as the air temperature drops below zero. Day 10. They pass the 180th meridian, the international dateline the opposite side of the Earth from the Greenwich Prime Meridian. We're now crossing the meridian of 180 degrees longitude, from the Western Hemisphere to the East. As we've passed the international date line, we have to turn the date back one day. So today is still September the 13th, and we need to celebrate. Cheers. It's another cause for celebration on board. Chinese liqueur and Russian sausage. But then Qingdao China springs a surprise on her crew. When they check her sails on the morning of day 11, they discover a problem with her huge mainsail. They have to remove the entire sail to repair a shattered slider and two connecting pins on the mast, damaged during heavy overnight winds. A batten car connecting the mainsail was broken last night. Now we have to take the mainsail down and check if we can fix it. It's extremely cold. If we can fix it quickly, We'll do it now. If not, we'll have to wait until it's warmer to do the repair. At the moment, we don't know exactly the extent of the damage. We'll have to check it thoroughly and then make a decision. Fortunately, they have spares on board, 
but it takes them four hours in bitterly cold weather to carry out the repairs. Dusk on September the 14th. The finish line, just east of the Chukotka Peninsula on the Russian mainland, is only a few hours away. Quentin Monogier is on watch deep in thought. Every mile brings him closer to the newly born son he's not yet met. I try and phone every day to give an update and especially to hear their news. I can't wait to meet the little chap. There will be time enough to tell him all about it. We have our whole lives ahead of us, so all in good time. For now, we're doing some great sailing in beautiful places, so you have to make the most of the moment. The big day has arrived. After 13 days of relentless pressure in freezing temperatures and life-threatening ice flows, the finish line is in sight. It's five minutes to the finish line, just ahead of us. It'll be our first sighting of lands on the whole journey. Tundra with some snow on the coast. And we're arriving at sunrise. A memorable moment. The finish line has been crossed. I'm on cloud nine. It's 16.48 Greenwich Mean Time, September the 15th, 2015. We just crossed the finish line and it's an unforgettable moment. I want to thank everyone. Thanks to all the people who support and care for me. Thanks to everyone in my hometown, Qingdao. Thanks to my family and friends. Of course, I want to thank most of all my team, fighting with me all these days, working day and night. We've strived for success together. We deserve this moment. So thanks, everyone. So Guo Chuan's great Arctic adventure is over. Congratulations to him, to Qingdao, China, and to all who sailed in her. Subscribe now to our YouTube channel for the very best of Transworld Sports.